Hey guys, it's Rich Kimball and uh, really excited about this video that we're going to do for you today. I also realized that it's going to be a little long winded. So there's a lot of great content here. So I'm going to ask you to maybe carve out about 10 minutes. I'm hoping I'll be done in 10. I'm going to probably be talking real fast. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. What we're going to talk about today, I thought was 12 tactics to help move your offer to the front of the line. It ended up being 19. I'm going to refer to my notes a couple of times because I didn't memorize this stuff, but we're going to jump right into it. I got a lot of great information in. Before I start, I wanted to thank each and every agent that I spoke to, which was over 20 agents on Monday and Tuesday, and asked the simple question, what do you do to get your offer moved to the front of the line in a multi-offer situation? So we're going to jump right into it. <clears throat> the first one, which is pretty common, is the letter from the heart. In other words, get your client to write a letter about why they want to get into that house. Now, why did I start here with this? They should probably write that letter first rather than when you're in the rush to get everything done. You don't want to kind of wait for the letter. I would say have them write the letter first. Now, ideally, you want to personalize that letter a little bit to the house they're putting the letter in. If they wrote the base letter about why it's important for them to move, and then they add a simple paragraph complimenting the seller on their home and also stating what it is about that particular property that's going to make their uh, property, their home, the family's home, a dream home. So get the letter done first. Uh, another thing that we talked about or that, that I got as an advice was, if you've got a couple buyers that are looking in a specific area, why wouldn't you have a program set up or a mailer or something set up so that, say you had two buyers in Orland Park, can't find anything in a couple of subdivisions or a school district. Why wouldn't you have a campaign set up to try to go and market those areas for listings? Something like I have two buyers ready to go for your house. If you're thinking about selling, give me a call. We can get your house sold without people marching through because I've got buyers ready to go. It's kind of a cool tactic. It's about getting to the home before the home goes public. So if you've got buyers in those areas, why not have a strategy set up to market those homes in those areas? Next, uh, avoid the pick of the litter properties. I thought this was a great tip. So the super hot properties, I have agents, an agent gave me a suggestion, avoid the ones that are going to be in those multiple offer uh, properties. Maybe, maybe look for ones that are a little bumped and bruised. Maybe try to target ones that have been on the market for a little bit longer. Then the other thing that you can do is if those properties are bumped and bruised, tactic number four is use renovation financing to open up more properties to your buyers. So you're going to see in the listing, let's say you've got a buyer that's FHA approved and you'll see in the listing cash or conventional only, which, you know, screams that the property needs a hug. And why not bring that FHA borrower to that property, knowing that their FHA loan can also include renovation to get the property approvable and actually probably make it a nice home, forever home. Not sure. All right. So tactic number five, uh, look slightly outside their desired area. So somebody says, I want to be in this community. Sometimes they're really looking to target a school district. And sometimes that school district will also include some other towns. Schomburg School District, for example, there's parts of Hanover Park that actually would put those folks in that school district. It might be something a little bit more affordable and easier to obtain because it's a different community, but it's still the same school district. So the tip that I got was look slightly outside the desired area. Next, now that you found the property, so these are some things that can be done before. Now that you found the property, contact the listing agent and determine the first thing that I would ask the listing agent is, or the tip that I was given was, what closing date do you really want? And then see if your buyers can accommodate that closing date. A lot of times you might put in a 30-day contract and they haven't even found a home. 
or they're having something built or they're relocating out of state, they really need 60. So get a hold of the listing agent, find out what that ideal desired date is, and that's the date that you're gonna put on your offer. Next, if it is a hot property, ask them straight up. Do how many offer how many offers do you have? Do you have multiple offers? Get that information because future tactics that we talk about, you'll be able to uh, leverage that information with your buyers. The last thing I think was really important, and I think we kind of neglected, is build rapport with the listing agents. So show them that you're a professional, show them that maybe they're with a similar company, maybe you guys have been lucky enough to have had a transaction in the past. If you can somehow build some rapport with that listing agent, that sometimes can be enough to get that offer accepted. Now, uh, let's see here. So covered that. Also, when you are talking to the listing agent, find out what's important to the sellers about this sale. Is it price? Is it moving date? You know, do they want, are they, are, did, have they expressed the fact that they may want a family there or people with kids? Some sellers are like that, I hear. All right. So next topic or next tactic, no insulting offers. If your clients really want this home and they come at it really low and other offers come in, your clients stand little to no chance of altering their offer to get back into that competitive game because they came in $40,000 low. It's insulting. So if they really want the home no, and you know it's a hot home, no insulting offers. All right. Next tactic we have is try to be the first offer whenever possible. You know that it's a hot home, you're ready to go. That first offer does statistically have an advantage over the subsequent offers. Sometimes the seller's like, hey, I got it, I'm good, I don't wanna look at anything else. So you never know. Try to be that first offer in the door when you're talking about multiple offers. The next thing that we had is um, full price, no concessions. If you know for a fact, because you had to wait in line to get into this property, that there's going to be multiple offers, full price offer, no concessions, make it attractive to the seller. Next tactic is kind of talks about that a little bit, but it's an escalation clause. I talked about three or four agents of the 20 that I pulled on Monday. And three or four of them said, yeah, they're starting to use an escalation clause or on their listings, they're starting to see escalation clauses. So with the escalation clause, the conversation with the buyer has to be really simple. How bad do you want the home? And then you set up the escalation clause up to the price they're willing to pay. And if you need more description of what an escalation clause is, reach out to your broker for a little bit more instruction on that. I'm probably not uh, qualified to teach you guys about escalation clauses. Go reach out to your managing broker and get a nice little education on that. One quick tip though, the escalation clause allows you to put an offer in over the list price. If you as an agent are concerned about that property appraising, you may wanna tip off the buyer that by the way, if the property doesn't appraise, and let's say it falls short an extra $2,000, are you the buyer willing to pay that extra $2,000? So escalation cause clauses can be tricky, but I, I hear that they're very, very effective to get your offer moved to the front of the line, which is really what today's topic's about. All right, uh, next on my list, cash offers. Well, that's kind of obvious, right? I had to put it in here. I'm a lender. I don't like cash offers, but we know the sellers do. So, you know, I had to talk about it, but you know, that's, you guys know that. Next, um, larger earnest money. This is something that I think is forgotten. So I did get this tip from an agent, a larger earnest money. You know, we know for the most part, it's extremely rare for a buyer ever to lose their earnest money. So if they really want this property and you're, con you're confident that they're not going to flake out and walk away from it, which is really the only time their earnest money is ever really subject to loss. What's wrong with writing a $4,000, $5,000, even a $20,000 earnest money check? It's dramatic when the listing agent sees it and the seller sees it. They know your buyer 
definitely wants this property and they're putting their best foot forward. Larger earnest money, don't forget. I think it's a simple thing to ask for, but I know it makes a difference. All right. Um, this next tactic, I think, has to be for a special buyer. The tactic I was given was no home inspection. So who is the no home inspection for? If you've got somebody who's a tradesman, who's buying their home, they're a plumber, they're an electrician, or they have a relative that you've also had to show the property to, they're bringing their dad and the dad's a plumber. If you have somebody who is comfortable in the trades enough to kind of look at that property and say, we understand the risk of not having a home inspection, seller loves it because they know you're not going to come at them for anything and but the buyer needs to be prepared and there are some buyers out there that i think would qualify for this the next tactics a variant of that it's basically as is so we're making an as is offer subject to major stuff so you're basically saying that we're making an as is offer subject to the roof the furnace, the hot water tank, and the foundation, and things of that nature being in good working order. We're not going to nitpick you about a broken window, a missing railing, some peeling paint. So it's an as-is offer subject to major things, and you could list that what those major things are. I think that's a great option as far as adding that to your offer. Next, uh, we have... Uh, we talked about making the offer only subject to the big things, so we got that. Um, getting into my world a little bit now in these last two tactics. One, you want to let them know that the buyer has been not only approved, but pre-underwritten, meaning that the lender, like Cross Country or whoever you're working with, has actually went a step farther and collected information like bank statements, paycheck stubs, tax returns, and verified those things. So one of the things that we do, this last tactic is specific to our team, the Kimball team. We create a video, and the video is about a minute long video that goes along with the pre-approval letter. The video basically doesn't say anything specific, and I'm gonna give you just a taste of what that looks like. Congratulations on receiving an offer on your listing. This offer includes a pre-approval letter for John Doe. That approval letter was generated by myself, Rich Kimball at Cross Country Mortgage. Here's what went into generating the letter. Yes, we have an application. Yes, we pulled credit. John has amazing credit. We have an automated underwriting approval. However, what we've also done to make that approval letter stronger is John has provided us bank statements. We have verified that he has the assets to close this transaction. He's also provided us paycheck stubs and tax returns. So we verified that they have the income to close this transaction. John has excellent credit. He's a very strong buyer. If you have any questions about John's qualification, call me, Rich Kimball, at 630 291 six zero one two i'll be more than happy to answer any questions and we look forward to working with you that's the video now that video i know for a fact will help your offers get approved our approval ratio on the, when the videos go out with the offer is about a hundred percent so we've covered about 19 items here i would solicit you to set to email me anything else that you've covered and what we're going to do next week is put this in a written format for you. That'll come out next Friday. Speaking of the weekend, uh, we're going to be available for you. My team is on call all weekend. We have one number that you would send a buyer to in the weekend. It rings the entire team's phones. That number is 847-603-2300. So 603-2300. On call this weekend. Saturday, we're going to have myself, Brian, and Gunner on call. Sunday, David, Gunner, and Priscilla are going to be on call. So we work the weekends for you guys. We know it's important. Last thing that I've got is Wednesday. We are doing a webinar. Almost feel like this should have been one because the video is long. And again, I apologize ahead of time for that or in the beginning. We are having a presentation on Wednesday. It's actually a lunch and learn. We're gonna send lunch to your house. And if you saw me eating a sub sandwich, it's gonna be Jimmy John. So uh, we're having a lunch and learn Wednesday the 17th on HomeBot. HomeBot is an amazing tool 
that will help you market your database, market to your prospects. It will generate leads for you and listings for you. I know it. If you want more information on that, email us back. We'll send you the registration. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. I got a lot out of it when I was doing the polling on Monday. God bless you guys. Have a safe weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.